Welcome to Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, a teaching ministry that focuses on God's unconditional love and grace. It's like he was just putting the pieces together for me in such a way that just was simple but powerful. And I was like, yeah, this is, this is God's truth right here. It wasn't always what I, what I wanted to hear, but I knew it was the truth, and I always wanted the truth. And now, here's Andrew. Welcome to our Thursday's broadcast of the Gospel Truth. Today, I'm continuing to teach on a subject that I've entitled Self-Centeredness, the Source of All Grief. I've got this free little booklet that we're making available to you today. I also have this book in Spanish. And I tell you, this is just a powerful teaching. I've shared a lot of really good things. If you've missed any of this, please go back to our website, awmi.net, and you can see this entire week's worth of broadcast, or you can get this free teaching uh, by getting the book. And I promise you, it would change your life. I've been using as kind of the foundation scripture. One of the things that the Lord really used to open uh, up my understanding to this is Proverbs chapter 13, verse 10, where it says, Only by pride cometh contention. Only. That's the only reason. And yet most of us think that, no, it's what this person did to me. No, it's not what people do to you that make you angry because Jesus had people treat Him worse than any of us have ever been treated and He was able to still say, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. It's not what's going on around you that makes you angry. It's what's inside of you that makes you angry. And specifically, there's probably multiple things, but the root of all of it is your self-centeredness. The fact that you are so alive to yourself that you are so focused on yourself, that you are so promoting of yourself is what makes you so sensitive to what other people think. When you get to a place to where you, it's not all about you, that you've actually fallen in love with God and other people more than you love yourself, you'll find out that it just, it's like it takes the dagger out of your heart. It takes this anger. It takes this streak of of selfishness out of your heart when you fall in love with God and other people more than you love yourself. And sad to say, there's not a lot of Christians that have come to that. You know, there was an instance in uh, Pritchett, Colorado, and I pastored a little church there. We had seen a man raised from the dead, and it was just a town of 144 people. There was 10 people in the church before I got there. I held a meeting. We saw a man raised from the dead, and as a result, Uh, we started having a hundred people come to church. They weren't all from Pritchett. They came from the surrounding areas. But I mean, it was amazing and great things were happening. But um, I was teaching things that were not in agreement with what these 10 people in that church had had, uh, been taught. And some of them even got mad because there was people outside of Pritchett that were coming to church. And they wanted it to be just a Pritchett group. They got mad because I didn't sing out of the hymnals that I sang what they called nursery rhymes. And so anyway, I just started having people come against me. And there was this one guy who was a friend of mine. And I don't know all the reasons why, but anyway, he got upset at me and he blasted me. He accused me of stealing money from the church. He accused me of all kinds of things. And he just let me have it. Now, in the natural... When something like that happened, I would have taken offense. I would have been angry and bitter. But you know what? I knew, first of all, that the things he was saying weren't true. And I didn't care. I didn't have to justify myself. And somebody might think, well, what? how's this going to affect other people in the church? You know what? That's really not my business. If I'm worried about what everybody thinks about me, like right now, I've got thousands of blogs that had been written about what a terrible person I am. And I've literally had my staff come to me and say, you've got to do something. There are things that we can do to, I don't know, somehow or another, you divert people away from these things. I I don't know. But anyway, they came to me and told me that they wanted to, uh, you know, do something to stop all of these negative things that were written. And I told them, I said, forget it. I said, let it go. They said, but people are getting the wrong impression. I said, forget it. And then a couple of months later, they came to me and they gave me about five of these websites or or things that had been said about me. And they said, we need to change it. And I said, look, I told you months ago not to spend any time doing this. I said, I am not here to promote myself. If I get off the track and arguing with the grandstands, 
and trying to justify myself. I might win the argument, but I'm going to lose the race. I said, I do not want any of our resources going to defending me and defending my honor. I said, I'm going to sit here and preach the gospel and God can bear witness with people's hearts or I don't care. It just doesn't matter to me. And there's a lot of people watching this program and think, well, that's a terrible, that's a stupid thing to do. But I believe it's the correct thing to do. Jesus didn't defend himself. You know, today, most ministers would fall all over themselves apologizing and trying to keep people from misunderstanding them. But Jesus, he just spoke. They said, you know, do something. Show us your supernatural power. John chapter 6. And he, and they said, Moses gave them manna. Can you provide manna? And he says, I am manna. I am the bread that came down from heaven. You need to eat me. And they said, eat you. Are you talking about cannibalism? And of course, most people today would have just, I mean, they would have uh, done whatever it took to explain, oh no, I'm not cannibalism. Please don't misunderstand. Please understand what I'm saying. That's the way most ministers would be today. They would just spend huge amounts of time trying to make sure that nobody misunderstood them. Jesus went on to say, and instead of explaining himself, instead of trying to, to, you know, to uh, steer them away from misunderstanding, he just made it worse. He says, I'm telling you, unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you don't have any life in you. And there was 5,000 people that were there and they got so offended at him that they all left. Most people would look at that as failure. I look at that as one of Jesus' greatest moments because it revealed that he was not out to please people. He was not trying to just draw all of these people to himself and wanted everybody to love him. He was telling the truth. And it says in that context, I'm not turning over and reading these verses, but if you look in John chapter 6, it says he knew that these people weren't seeking him out of true love. They sought him because he had turned, he had multiplied the loaves and the fishes and fed 5,000 men, not including all the women and children. They were seeking him and wanting to make him a king because he filled their belly. It was all selfishness. You know what that is? That's pride. And he knew that people who only served him when it was to their advantage, but there was no real commitment to him, he knew that they weren't those followers that he wanted. And so he didn't try and explain himself. They left thinking he was talking about cannibalism. And he did. He just let them go. And instead of turning to the disciples, he still had his 12 disciples there. And instead of turning and saying, I need a hug. Could somebody please make me feel accepted? No, he turned around to those guys and he says, will you leave also? It's like saying, there's the door. If you don't want to, if you can't handle this, you leave too. He wasn't dependent upon people. He wasn't offended when people misunderstood him. He didn't go out of his way to try and gain everybody's favor. He only cared about what his father said about him. His relationship with God literally set him free from worrying about what other people had to think. So back to this story where this person in Pritchett, Colorado was saying terrible things and had an argument with me and said, I mean, things that nobody should say to a person. Did you know the next week I was driving by this person's business and it was my habit to stop in and talk to him and say something. And so I just pulled over and I asked Jamie if she wanted to go in with me and she said, no, I'm staying in the car. So I went in and I only talked to this guy for just a few minutes because he was uh, cool towards me. He didn't want me to be around. He wasn't friendly the way that he normally was. And I came back out to the car and I sat down and I told Jamie, I said, something's wrong with him. I said, he wasn't friendly to me the way he spoke. He normally is. And she just looked at me and she says, are you kidding? And I said, no, I'm, I'm promising you something's wrong. And she had to remind me that he had tried to take the church away from me, that he had accused me of stealing money, having sexual immorality. She had to remind me of the terrible things he had said because you know what? I forgot it. I had literally forgotten that he had said those things. And I know some of you watching this program think, well, you are weird. I think you're weird for sitting there and harboring hurt and resentment. I knew that the things he was saying weren't true. I hadn't done them. Why should I sit there and worry about it? And I just went to the Lord and I cast my care about it over on the Lord. You can get to a place to where honestly, you don't care. You don't have to have people's approval. You aren't codependent. It's not all about you. It's all about Jesus. And if 
SOMEBODY ELSE CAN PRESENT JESUS BETTER THAN I CAN, THEN I DON'T HAVE ANY PROBLEM GIVING MY PLATFORM TO THEM AND LETTING THEM SPEAK. I DON'T HAVE A PROBLEM PROMOTING OTHER PEOPLE BECAUSE IT'S NOT ALL ABOUT ME. AND BECAUSE OF IT, I'VE HAD PEOPLE THAT DISAGREE AND THERE'S PEOPLE THAT REJECT ME, BUT it's, IT DOESN'T CHANGE ME BECAUSE I'M NOT SAYING THAT I NEVER HAVE A SELFISH THOUGHT, BUT I AM SAYING I HAVE DEALT WITH THIS. IT'S NOT LIKE I'VE ARRIVED, BUT I'VE LEFT AND I'VE STARTED DEALING WITH THIS AND I'VE ACTUALLY GOTTEN TO A PLACE TO WHERE PEOPLE CAN INSULT ME AND DO THINGS AND I DON'T EVEN REMEMBER IT BECAUSE I JUST... IF YOU AREN'T SELFISH, IF YOU AREN'T PROMOTING YOURSELF, IF IT'S NOT ALL ABOUT YOU, IT JUST CHANGES THE WAY EVERYTHING WORKS. IT REALLY DOES. IT TOTALLY CHANGES EVERYTHING. YOU KNOW, YOUR EMOTIONS FOLLOW YOUR THOUGHTS. AND IF YOU ARE JUST THINKING ABOUT YOURSELF AND YOU'RE, you're PROTECTIVE AND you're, YOU'RE FEARFUL AND YOU'RE WORRIED THAT SOMEBODY'S GOING TO SAY OR DO SOMETHING ABOUT ME, IF YOU DON'T FIND YOUR IDENTITY IN THE LORD AND YOUR, your PERSONAL uh, SATISFACTION AND CONTENTMENT IS IN WHAT GOD THINKS ABOUT YOU, IF YOU ARE CODEPENDENT UPON PEOPLE AND HAVING THEM APPROVE OF YOU, YOU ARE GOING TO BE ONE MESSED UP PERSON BECAUSE I GUARANTEE YOU, SATAN'S ALWAYS GOING TO HAVE SOMEBODY COME ALONG AND PUSH YOUR BUTTONS AND SAY SOMETHING THAT OFFENDS YOU. YOU NEED TO GET TO A PLACE TO WHERE YOU JUST... IT'S NOT ABOUT YOU. YOU KNOW, IF... HERE'S AN EXAMPLE. I, I WAS WATCHING a, mo- uh, a TELEVISION PROGRAM ONE TIME AND IT WAS TEACHING AGAINST uh, CAPITAL PUNISHMENT. THE PROGRAM WAS TRYING TO GET YOU TO DO AWAY WITH CAPITAL PUNISHMENT. I I BELIEVE THAT CAPITAL PUNISHMENT IS PRESCRIBED IN THE SCRIPTURE. I'M NOT EXCITED ABOUT IT. I THINK IT'S TERRIBLE THAT YOU'D EVER HAVE TO PUT A PERSON TO DEATH. BUT IN GENESIS CHAPTER 9 AND MANY OTHER PLACES, I BELIEVE IT IS PRESCRIBED AND I BELIEVE IT'S A DETERRENT AND I BELIEVE THAT THERE'S A PLACE FOR IT. SO I BELIEVE IN CAPITAL PUNISHMENT. BUT I WAS WATCHING THIS PROGRAM THAT WAS TRYING TO TALK YOU OUT OF IT AND WHAT THEY DID WAS TAKE A PERSON WHO WAS IN PRISON FOR RAPE AND MURDER AND THEY SHOWED HIM SITTING IN THIS CELL AND THEY WENT FROM BLACK... THEY WENT FROM COLOR TO BLACK AND WHITE TO MAKE IT MORE DRAB. THEY SHOWED THIS MAN SITTING THERE WITH IT, YOU KNOW, HIS HEAD RESTED ON HIS HANDS LIKE THIS AND JUST LOOKING DEPRESSED AND THEY WERE PLAYING THIS SAD MUSIC AND THEY SHOWED YOU HIS CELL AND THINKING THAT THIS IS WHAT THIS GUY'S LIFE IS LIKE. AND THEN THEY WENT DOWN THE... uh, THE HALLWAY AND SHOWED YOU WHERE THE ELECTRIC CHAIR WAS AND WHERE THIS GUY WAS GOING TO BE ELECTROCUTED AND PUT TO DEATH IN JUST A FEW DAYS. AND THEN THEY WENT BACK AND SHOWED YOU HIS BABY PICTURES. AND THEY HAD PICTURES OF HIM AS A LITTLE BABY. THEY HAD PICTURES OF HIM AS A LITTLE KID, YOU KNOW, WEARING A COWBOY OUTFIT AND RIDING A STICK HORSE AND THINGS LIKE THIS. AND THEY SHOWED THESE INNOCENT PICTURES. AND THEN THEY SHOWED HIM AS HE GREW UP BEING ABUSED AND TERRIBLE THINGS HAPPENED TO HIM AND HIS TRAGIC LIFE. AND THEN THEY SHOWED YOU HIM SITTING IN THE PRISON CELL. AND EVEN THOUGH I BELIEVED IN CAPITAL PUNISHMENT, WHEN YOU SAW THINGS FROM HIS SIDE AND YOU SAW HIS BABY PICTURES AND YOU SAW THESE INNOCENT THINGS AND THEN YOU you FAST FORWARD TO SEE WHERE WE ARE GOING TO PUT THIS PERSON TO DEATH, YOU THINK THERE'S GOT TO BE A DIFFERENT WAY. THERE'S GOT TO BE SOMETHING BETTER. AND EVEN THOUGH I'M I'm NOT EXCITED ABOUT CAPITAL PUNISHMENT, I DO BELIEVE IT IS A TURN AND I BELIEVE IT IS A GODLY THING TO DO. EVEN THOUGH I FELT THAT WAY, I FELT MYSELF THINKING, YOU KNOW, SYMPATHY AND PITY FOR THIS GUY AND THINKING, SURELY THERE'S BOUND TO BE SOME BETTER WAY TO DEAL WITH THIS. AND AS I WAS LOOKING AT THAT AND TRYING TO PROCESS IT, THE LORD SPOKE TO ME AND HE SAYS, WHAT WOULD HAPPEN IF YOU TOOK THE LITTLE GIRL'S PICTURES THAT HE RAPED AND THEN HE MURDERED AND WHAT IF YOU TOOK HER BABY PICTURES AND SHOWED THEM TO THIS SAME GROUP? AND THEN YOU SHOWED HER GROWING UP AND PLAYING WITH HER DOLLS OR WITH HER FRIENDS AND STUFF, AND HERE'S THIS INNOCENT LITTLE CHILD AND SOME PERVERT COMES INTO HER LIFE AND FOR SEXUAL GRATIFICATION HE RAPES THIS INNOCENT LITTLE GIRL AND THEN HE'S NOT EVEN MAN ENOUGH TO FACE WHAT HE'S DONE. HE KILLS HER TRYING TO COVER IT UP. IF YOU SHOWED THE EXACT SAME SITUATION BUT FROM THE GIRL'S PERSPECTIVE INSTEAD OF THE MAN'S PERSPECTIVE AND STUFF, THE SAME PEOPLE WHO ARE FEELING SYMPATHY TOWARDS HIM RIGHT NOW WOULD FEEL... THEY'D TURN INTO A VIGILANTE COMMITTEE AND THEY'D WANT TO GO STRING THAT GUY UP FROM THE NEAREST TREE. AND THE LORD USED THAT TO SHOW ME. SEE, IT SHOW... IT JUST DEPENDS ON WHAT PERSPECTIVE YOU'RE LOOKING AT THINGS FROM. 
If you are always looking at things from a selfish perspective and always thinking about yourself, it just guarantees that you are going to have a violent, angry response anytime self gets treated wrong. And we live in a fallen world, and self is going to be treated wrong all of the time, sometimes maliciously, other times just out of neglect because people don't realize how important you are. You are never going to get to where self isn't rubbed the wrong way. And as long as that is alive on the inside of you and sitting there just, you know, you got these buttons and you're just waiting on somebody to push your button, I can guarantee you it's going to happen. But you can sit there and get to where it's not about you and you get to where you love God and you love other people more than you love yourself. And when somebody pulls in front of you in traffic, and they don't even turn their blinker on and they cut you off instead of you thinking about, look what they did to me and how don't they see me here? See, that's going to cause anger to rise up. But if you were to think about other people and think, you know, I wonder why he did that. Maybe he just came from the hospital and his wife of 40 or 50 years is dying and he was so focused on that, he just forgot what he was doing. When you look at things from other people's perspective, you have mercy and you have grace towards them. Now, sometimes people are malicious and sometimes people are mean, but even in that situation, you could sit there and feel pity and say, man, what has happened that has made them to where they just don't care about anybody but themselves? You know, one of the ladies who came to work for me, one of my very first employees, it's a long story. I haven't got time to go into the whole thing, but her husband was terrible. Her husband beat her. He tried to kill her. He had poured hot grease over her. He had broken her neck. And two children from a previous marriage he kept in the basement. And if they ever came up out of the basement, he said he'd kill them. Now, most people would say, you need to leave a marriage like that. And I can understand that. I'm not saying that you have to stay in an abusive relationship. But in this situation, this woman came to me and told me about this. And I told her, I said, the only reason He acts the way he does is because this guy's demon-possessed. And I said, you have God living on the inside of you, and greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. She says, you mean I don't have to leave? I said, you don't have to leave. You're free to leave. I said, the Scripture says, 1 Corinthians 7, if he's pleased to dwell with you, let not the wife depart. doesn't sound to me like he's pleased to dwell with you. So I said, you're free to leave, but I said, you can believe God. She chose to believe God. And and one of the things she did, I taught her the exact same things I've been teaching this week about what is it in him. Instead of looking at it from just what he's done to you and your children, what is it that's in him that makes this man so miserable, that makes him such a, you know, tool of the devil? So she began to pray and start asking God to show her what was wrong with him. She quit being selfish, thinking about, just look what he's done to me. And she started saying, God, what's going on on the inside of him? And the Lord showed her that he was born in Puerto Rico, I think it was, and he was dedicated to the devil in a demonic, satanic ritual at his birth. They killed a chicken and put blood over him. And he was dedicated to the devil from birth. And he could leave his body and howl at the moon. And and anyway, he had all kinds of demonic stuff. And when she saw things from his point of view, she actually started having compassion for him, even though he was doing terrible things to her. And they went to a marriage counselor And I knew this marriage counselor. He was a good man, but he asked the man first to tell his side of the story. And the man just started saying everything about his wife that he was guilty of. He lied through his teeth and he misrepresented, said, she's broken my neck. She's poured hot grease over me. She's done these things. And the counselor, a friend of mine, got so mad, he told him, divorce this woman. Get out of there. You do not need to stay with her. And anyway, the wife of the counselor calmed him down, says, look, there's always two sides to every story. Let's listen to what she has to say. First of all, let me say that if you were in for marriage counselor and if your husband was lying about you and everything he was guilty of, he was attributing it to you, how many of you would have even let him finish his sentence? See, most of us, because it's all about us and we've got to defend our honor and we've got to look right, we wouldn't have even allowed him to finish saying what he was saying without breaking in. This woman never said a word. But finally, when the man says, all right, what's your side of the story? Instead of her defending herself and promoting herself and saying, no, he's the one that's guilty of everything. It's not me. You know what she did? 
she, she just said, look, I used to think that he was my problem, but the Lord has shown me that, man, I am just as much of a part of the problem, that I have taken hurt and offense and God's dealing with me. And she just talked about what she was going through and she never exposed him. She never said anything. Again, most people watching this would say, I'd never do that. That's because you are so insecure that you have to defend yourself. You can't let God defend you. You have to do it. And I'm telling you, if you are in there defending yourself, that's one reason God won't do it. God can't get a word in edgewise. If you defend yourself, God won't do it. But if you will trust your defense to God, God will defend you. So this woman never said a word against her husband. And by the time they got out to the car, the man was literally shaking. And he says, why didn't you defend yourself? Why didn't you expose what I said? AND SHE SAYS, I CAME HERE TO GET YOU HELP. GOD HAS ALREADY SET ME FREE AND GOD IS HEALING MY HEART. AND IF YOU RUNNING ME DOWN HELPS YOU, IF THIS IS WHAT'S GOING TO HELP YOU, SHE SAID, THEN I DON'T CARE. YOU CAN JUST SAY WHATEVER YOU WANT TO. AND THIS MAN LITERALLY BECAME SO AFRAID OF HER. HE LOST HIS DEMONIC POWERS. HE MOVED OUT OF THE HOUSE. HE COULDN'T STAND TO BE AROUND HER BECAUSE SHE WAS OPERATING IN GREATER POWER AND AUTHORITY THAN HE WAS. AND FOR ABOUT SIX MONTHS, THEY WERE SEPARATED. SHE GOT THE KIDS OUT OF THE BASEMENT, STARTED TRYING TO HELP THEM RECOVER. AND FINALLY, THE MAN GOT BORN AGAIN. AND THEN THEY HAD MARITAL PROBLEMS BECAUSE HE WANTED TO GO TO RAMA AND BECOME A PASTOR, AND SHE DIDN'T WANT TO BE A PASTOR'S WIFE. BUT YOU KNOW WHAT TURNED ALL OF THAT AROUND? IN A SITUATION THAT THE VAST MAJORITY OF PEOPLE WATCHING THIS PROGRAM WOULD THINK THAT THERE IS NO WAY YOU TAKE CARE OF YOURSELF, YOU PROTECT YOURSELF, YOU PROMOTE YOURSELF, YOU DEFEND YOURSELF WHEN HE FALSELY ACCUSES YOU. SHE TURNED IT OVER TO THE LORD, AND BECAUSE OF IT, GOD did a, WORKED A MIRACLE IN THIS SITUATION, ONE OF THE GREATEST MIRACLES I HAD EVER SEEN. NOW, AGAIN, I'M NOT SAYING THAT YOU HAVE TO STAY IN ABUSIVE MARRIAGE. I'M NOT SAYING THAT YOU SHOULD PUT YOUR CHILDREN AT RISK. YOU'VE GOT A RESPONSIBILITY, AND YOU NEED TO HEAR WHAT GOD HAS TO SAY. BUT I'M SAYING THAT THE PRINCIPLE THAT THIS STORY I RELATED IS TEACHING IS TRUE, AND THAT IS THAT YOU DON'T HAVE TO DEFEND YOURSELF, THAT IT'S NOT ABOUT YOU JUST MAKING YOURSELF ALWAYS LOOK GOOD. YOU DON'T HAVE TO ALWAYS BE RIGHT. YOU CAN TURN THE OTHER CHEEK. YOU CAN LET PEOPLE FALSELY ACCUSE YOU AS JESUS DID, AND YOU CAN STILL TURN AROUND AND SAY, FATHER, FORGIVE THEM, FOR THEY KNOW NOT WHAT THEY DO. IF YOU WOULD LOOK AT THINGS FROM THE OTHER PERSON'S PERSPECTIVE, MUCH OF THE TIME YOU WOULD FIND OUT THAT IT'S REALLY NOT ABOUT YOU. THEY DON'T REALLY ATTACK IN YOU. THIS PERSON IS MISERABLE ON THE INSIDE, AND THEY CAN'T GIVE AWAY WHAT THEY DON'T HAVE. IF THEY HAVE NEVER RECEIVED LOVE, UNCONDITIONAL LOVE, THEY CAN'T GIVE UNCONDITIONAL LOVE. YOU CAN'T GIVE AWAY WHAT YOU DON'T HAVE. AND SO IT WOULD MAKE YOU START FEELING COMPASSION AND YOU COULD TURN AROUND AND EXTEND AN OLIVE BRANCH AND MERCY TOWARDS A PERSON WHO'S TREATING YOU BADLY IF IT'S NOT ALL ABOUT YOU, IF YOU GET TO WHERE YOU LOVE OTHER PEOPLE AND YOU LOVE GOD MORE THAN YOU LOVE YOURSELF. On March 23, 1968, Andrew Womack received a dramatic revelation of God's unconditional love and grace. Since then, Andrew has shared this nearly too good to be true news with millions of listeners worldwide. With his daily television show reaching 4.4 billion people worldwide, Andrew's message is changing more lives than ever before. He's expanding the vision through Karis Bible College which has already discipled thousands of students around the globe and continues to grow every year. To learn more about what God is doing through the ministry, visit awmi.net. Andrew's complete teaching titled, Self-Centeredness, The Source of All Grief, is available in a 56-page booklet. And today, Andrew would like to offer this booklet as his free gift when you contact us. Get Andrew's Self-Centeredness, The Source of All Grief booklet in either English or Spanish absolutely free when you call our helpline at 719-635-1111 or go to our website at awmi.net. This offer is limited to one free book per household and is available in the U.S., U.K., Canada, and Australia. Contact us today to receive this free offer. This teaching is also available as a single CD or DVD made from our daily television broadcast. Each of these valuable resources is available for a gift of any amount. 
This entire series is also available for audio download absolutely free from our website. Go to awmi.net to see all the ways you can get this teaching. If you haven't yet partnered with us, I'd like to encourage you to pray about it. And then if the Lord says so, join with us because we are taking the gospel not only through television, but we've got over 70 uh, different locations around the world, offices, I think in 16 different nations. Uh, we have uh, probably 8,000 students going through Karis Bible College at any time with over 8,000 graduates. We're pumping out millions and millions of free material through our website, over 200,000 free hours of material on our website. And we're just reaching all around the world. We couldn't do it without partners. And so I would like to ask you to pray about it. If you want to make a difference, I believe that this is a good ministry. You'll get a great return, not only in heaven, but in this life, you'll receive a hundredfold. So join with us and become a partner with Andrew Womack Ministries today. You can become a Grace Partner or order resources through our website at awmi.net. While there, you can discover more product details and download additional free resources. You can also order resources or receive prayer by calling our helpline at 719-635-1111. Our helpline is open Monday through Friday, 24 hours a day, and Saturday and Sunday from 7.30 a.m. to 6 p.m. Mountain Time. To write us, use the address on your screen. We appreciate your generosity and hope to hear from you today. View the amazing true stories of five individuals that were considered to be lost causes. Yet in their darkest hours, God showed them His amazing love and grace. Discover for yourself the transformative power of the gospel with our Grace Encounters Volume 2 DVD. To purchase your DVD today, go to awmi.net slash gracencounters. You got to be leaders in this day, our guys. So your wife, your children need the provision that you can give them of leadership. We got to lead. We got to take a bold stand. We got to tell people where we stand and why we stand on these principles. Men, the culture says you're irrelevant or you're a part of the problem. God says you are the solution and he's calling you to stand courageous in this hour. I want to let you know that we have now started a Karis Daily Live Bible Study. We've been doing a Bible study every Tuesday night live for about two years, but now we have five days a week. We've varied the times so that we can accommodate anybody's schedule, and it's going to really be good. We're going to use our instructors from the school, and it'll be a blessing. So remember, we now have a Karis Daily Live Bible Study five days a week.